dude. How do you feel about uh, The Rock taking away? The oh, dude, we'll get right into it. Oh, okay. Because like, I just have a cursory knowledge. I, I like wrestling from afar. How I love long? the docs, you know? The documentaries are great. Like A&E does great, like Behind the Man. Or that's Vice, I think. Um, yeah, Vice does uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. And then um, A&E does biographies, which is through the WWE. So it's funny when they do a documentary about wrestling and it's from the WWE because it's very like... Um, like, uh, like talking points or... Yeah, it's like the tobacco companies doing a commercial for cigarettes where they go like, these can't hurt you. Everything is okay. And then Dark Side of the Ring is like, he was on enough painkillers and he raped his wife. And then they go him, they go, he wanted that title so bad. It's, it's so funny when you go between two documentaries. Yeah on the like, same you, thing you know who they're funded by <laughs> yeah like um i always like that with biopics when you can tell the person was involved in the production uh oh because they look like jesus yeah like you know like um the notorious movie about biggie and you're like well that was clearly written by puff daddy oh because biggie in the movie's like I don't think I can do any of this without you, Puff Daddy. And he's like, yeah, I'm the best. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? I'm just a fat guy. Yeah, I just like, I just can see how rhymes, how words rhyme. But you're the businessman. And P. Diddy's like, yeah, I'm the best. Yeah, he's going through it right now. I mean, yeah, Diddy's really going. The, the roosters are coming home. The chickens, that's what it is. It's not the roosters. I just fuck up phrases phrases the roosters are coming on getting the early bird when do you start or like how this, do you, is this is it this is no, it dude. for real yeah dude i'm all getting situated for fucking 20 I love minutes it, dude. like I think, half the pod is i just think that me. should be your thing and then i go like you just learn i have like weird backs on podcasts. <laughs> do you know his c4 is missing it's something with his lower he lumbar i'm like elvis that's why i'm always filmed from like because i just got like weird <laughs> i go dude his hip his hip gyrations are driving us all wild yeah it'd be funny if that's why you were such a terrific dancer is because you had horrific spina bifida and you just had to move <laughs> yeah to yeah keep yeah, going I was you're like, trying to like oh oh i was showing mike I, my the, dancing shit yeah oh is this everything all right i'm just trying to make sure you could with the arm oh yeah i'm with restless the dude what's wrong with me <laughs> yeah. i'm fucking you can't it's, it's this cold and yeah. then it's this couch yeah, give me that i'll double i'll double pillow holy hey, shit I'm two pillows by the way yeah. this, we'll just put this right here you ever thought about a beanbag situation like a beanbag is that too weird for like two i dudes? feel like that's the water bed of chairs so it's like a better concept than it is in practice. Like yeah. the idea of it, the oh, idea man. of a beanbag chair, you go in your head, you go, that's a great idea. And then you sit on one and you go, who the fuck okay. thought this was a good idea? Ch children, children, because children they, can, they can fucking like Bruce Lee out of any situation. That's exactly it. I've always had this thought. Like after I see a guy go into the gym and do like, uh, uh, like arm day or whatever the fuck, yeah. if I just pushed him into a beanbag chair, He'd be like, he would, uh, yeah, he'd be stuck. Uh, he would like, he would rot. Uh, do you know what's crazy is kids? When you're a kid, you're just like uh, ready to go everywhere, and it's like, how old are you? Thirty nine. So you, we're, I'm forty. Okay. So right around thirty five, all that stuff starts to be more laborious than you ever wanted it to. Like be. what? Getting like up. Getting up. Shit? Like getting yeah, up yeah, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. moving and being like going over and getting something. You're like. Ugh. I know. I don't Has know. This hap is this starting to happen to you? Like you'll be on a flight and just you're, you know, you've been sitting for so long. Yeah. Even if it's like a three hour flight and then when you get up, I'm like, my knees may explode. Yeah. I crack. I crack like I'm made of old, <laughs> like I'm made of old pasta. Like you're, you're a Duraflame. Just yeah. <laughs> I just like, I try to sneak up on my fiance and I'll be like, doesn't happen. <laughs> you'll just like hear my ankles crack i'm like Gosh. i my body cracks like i played in the nfl in the 70s you have like uh kenny smith knees yeah, even I'm though like, you're oh, just doing stand-up comedy oh yeah like you would want an excuse for me to stand up and go Ooh, i was actually uh, starting guard at st john's for four years instead i was just a pothead who uh yeah, i just did the road a lot <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah. You go, I used to move around on stage more but now i'm kind of like you know like a stand <laughs> uh, uh, post up and shoot guy yeah i'm worried i'm gonna yeah i'm, I'm fucking arvita sabonis with two bad sabonis, knees holy shit. <laughs> yeah. but you i was i was showing mike the uh the video of my one of my first experiences because you're an la guy i'm in new yeah. york and we were how long have you been doing comedy like 21 years yeah now? i started when i was 18 so where did you start i started when i was 21 so i started after you okay but 
being an East Coast guy, not really knowing you, my first experience with you was the Das Racist Holy shit. girl video. Whoa. And then I saw your stand-up. I was like, this dude's hilarious. Oh, that's nice. Because I didn't know you were doing a character. Yeah. Uh, and then I feel like it's you usually start to see it in the in the sequel, you start to see the cracks. Mm. And then in the third one, you're like, well, this movie. What about Matrix? How do you feel about that? Oh, I mean, the second one sucked. Yeah. But you know that they were supposed to do the Matrix as a trilogy, and then the studio was like, this shit sucks. For real? And they were like, well, they, they wanted Will Smith. They couldn't get Will Smith. So the the basically the Matrix made the Wachowskis. Right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wachowskis? Wachowski. 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 I don't know. Wachowskis? Something. You know those ladies. Yes. They had to do three movies into one. Mm. So, so the they, first one was three in one? So they were originally supposed to space it out. Uh. So they were going to make this long thing, and then they were like, no, put it all in one movie. And then it was a hit, and they go like, okay, well, now do three. And they're like, have I you guess. ever been on stage too long? Bro, and you're like, I hate stretching when I don't have stuff to stretch, or I wasn't planning on stretching. Yeah. And Sometimes now- when you do a smaller set, you're like, oh, I'll do a abridged version of this bit. Yeah. And then you have to go long and you go, well, that bit's actually like five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, but and I you, gave you. You also may have a ton of material and shit, but then when it's sprung on you, uh, you can, you're you having to like, you're just like opening up drawers in your brain, like what joke, blah, blah, blah. Dude, I have had moments where they've told me to stretch and I've been like, you look so unprofessional. What? You're just you're like, stretching? just want, I remember one thing and I've told, I think I've told this story before, but um, one time early on when I got past at the cellar, I was doing, I had like, I started doing new stuff and it was working and this lady gets up to go smoke a cigarette and she goes, nah, I heard this earlier this week because I had done it earlier in the oh. week and I was like, oh, she oh. goes every day. I guess she goes a couple times a week. All right. And I was like, oh, oh, and I was, and I had to pivot. And as I was doing that, Esty, the booker and Bill Maher All right. walked in the room and it was like, I was fucked. That's got to happen in every job though. When you're like doing something, they're like, they spring something on you. You're yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the fuck you want me to do. Yeah, stretch. At least we're in a profession where you can stretch. You know what I mean? It's so easy for comics. Well, it's all bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I always think about if you have to tell a magician to stretch, like a magician is running late <laughs> and he's up there and he's like, thank you. And just like, there's a guy in the top hat in the back. Like yeah, he goes, this, and he's oh. like, ah. <laughs> Francisco uh, the Wonderful isn't uh, here yet. Uh, does Keep anybody going. have a, a uh, wallet on them? I'm going to put her back together. I think um, so. Part of this man. podcast is uh, my friend Mark Sumner. Shout out Sums. Uh, got into opening old baseball, basketball, and football cards, and he gave me a box of 1989 NBA hoops cards. Holy shit! And so every guest opens Whoa. a pack, and we go through it and see what you got. Now the Sonics. You could have some good Sonics in there. The Timberwolves and the Magic are expansion teams. This is 1989. You know, I'm like, I feel like I'm 13 right now. Yeah. Do you know how long it's been since I've touched something? Like, you know what I mean? Well, it's fresh out the box. I mean, I have the box up there. These are unopened. You don't know who you're going to pull. I keep all the crusty ones, except Coach Dick Harder. I am sending that to my friend Chad Harder because he specifically requested that on an episode. Uh, I think I take all the crusty ones and then I just sign them. So we're going to make a pile of ones you want to keep and ones that you don't care about, okay. guys you've never heard of. Because I'll keep the ones you don't hear of. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to start signing them and giving them to fans at the end of shows. They don't do gum in basketball. That was only baseball? because no, I will chew that gum. It's still good, right? It disintegrates fast. It's really? made of rubber and oh, the rubber breaks fuck. down, but it's fun. I mean, even when you got it when you were a kid, it, it felt like yeah, a it billion sucked. years old. It immediately sucked. It was yeah. like chewing chalk. Yes. So these are fun. So just rip Bro, it open. I remember NBA hoops. Yeah. And I mean, there's going to be guys that we know. There's going to be guys we don't know. I'm saying it before. I, I don't know if we've done the research, but a fan said that Jeffrey Asmus's Michael Jordan all-star card that he opened was worth $7,500. For real? Yeah. So I, I don't know where we're at in finding that out. Jeffrey's on the road. He's a funny guy, too. Yeah. yeah. When he comes back, we're going to see how much money he made off one of these cards. I like that you delicately... It's like watching someone open a birthday present because you're like, oh, you do it Hello. gently. I, yeah, I appreciate the thought. I'm oh, just going to dig Sam Talent just fucking was like... <laughs> and just ripped it open. So look at this. Well, yeah. I want to savor the ritual, dude. It's almost like, it. it's like a cigar or something because I swear to God, I haven't opened... I'm not going to tell you how to uh, how to open your pack like, of cards. I'm time traveling to my childhood and you're telling, <laughs> you're telling me to speed up. Yeah. And I just you're want... Right. I want to time, I savor this moment. Take your time, dude. It's a simpler time. My mom's calling me to have dinner. Yeah. Uh, white guys have high shorts. Oh, they go which on, are they back. backwards. Oh yeah, oh. I mean you could, yeah. Smell the eighty nine. Smell the George H W Bush presidency. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. 
this is like the male equivalent of getting flowers for real <laughs> I swear, <laughs> this is like a brilliant idea, dude. Oh, we like, just had I'm, the box, I, and, I, and me and Mike were like, we should just start. I having think I might open just start passing out packs, like unopened packs. Of it's cards. very fun. It is, you know what it does? It does bring the unboxing. Grown men feeling. are going to cry. It's sort of like yeah. if you call um, a six-year-old guy bro. Yeah, I think I'm like, like what? what man? I've been called sir for the past. Yo, I am a bro. They forget they're a bro. <laughs> Let's see who you got. Who's up first? Alv Alvin Robertson. Albert Robinson from the Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks. Back when it was like a cartoony type uh, buck. And this guy's a first round pick. He's no slouch. Coming out of Arkansas. Kevin Duckworth. All right. I like how it's an, an action shot of him sitting. Dude, Kevin Duckworth in the warmups from the Blazers. If you're from Seattle. You were a Sonics fan, yeah. I'm guessing. Did you hate the Blazers or did you? I like Clyde Drexler. Who I was just all about like... dunking, you know? So I love Sean Kemp because yeah, that was my era. Yeah, yeah, Clyde, Clyde the Glide. Clyde the Glide. Well, now you got I mean, you got to save the all-star card. So we'll put that in the good I also pile. like how Clyde just was naturally, he had the horseshoe bald. He didn't, oh, even, he didn't even bick it. He was like, nah, man, he kept horseshoe. it. He kept it going. Clyde. Clyde Drexler was the, immediately the next card. All-star. Look at that. All-star game. Clyde. I, I willed it into existence. You really did. I've never seen that was, someone. That was the secret, dude. <laughs> yeah. Say Larry Bird. <laughs> Do something cool. And then, oh, you got a Super Whoa, Sonic? Whoa, Xavier McDaniel. Look at that, dude. A Sonic. X-Man. Yeah. Well, pff, put that in the good pile, dude. You you already are. He's already smoking Sam Talent. Brad. Sam Talent had so had many crusty. He had a lot of duds. Brad Davis. Brad Davis, That's by the way. Interesting technique. Brad Davis with the double hand shot. Yeah, what's he doing there? And then you look at the back. He's got coach face. That's true. Like you wouldn't believe. But the guy played a lot. The guy played 77 to 89. I mean, he had a career. First round pickup for the Lakers, too. Terry Cummings. Terry Cummings, all-star, never heard of him. I know. Do you think I he vaguely had like, remember Terry Do you think he had Cummings. like one good season? Yo. From the Milwaukee Bucks. From NBA Jam. Scott, Scott Styles. Styles. That's huge. Oh, my God, dude. I love it. I would play as him, dude. Him and Shaq. So, so you know about Scott Skiles, how many kids he's got? No. He's like, you know how Sean Kemp had all those kids? Yeah. Scott Skiles. He's the white Sean Kemp? Yes. He Good is. Scott Scott Skiles. He was busting in ladies all over the place. I'm looking it up right now to make sure I'm right. But Scott Skiles is, has like a ton of kids. How many? Why He's have I got about this? The athletes with the most children by the most women. I love there's a He's on game. he's on Complex's list of big papas. The athletes with the most children by the most women. And it's Scott Skiles. You gotta show. This is the guy, number 14, Scott Skiles. Number of kids with numbers of babies' mamas. Six kids unknown. <clears throat> It almost looks like you're reading that off the back of the card. <laughs> yeah. Like they put that on there. Damn, dude. This is there. I mean, they didn't even give the amount of babies mamas, but he's got six kids. So, he, I mean, that's a, that's, that's more than me. And that's the expansion card. Holy shit. That's nuts. You got the expansion team card. Oh, yeah. They weren't always around. Dude, you got a hell of a pack. James Worthy. James Worthy. Bro, Which, this pa this pack is nuts. It's nuts, dude. It's if Sam Talent's watching this, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. got ripped off. I feel bad. James Worthy. Which did you watch? Um, winning time. Winning time. Uh, yeah, they did yeah, not yeah, make yeah. him look good. They didn't make um, Jerry West look good either. No. That's funny, like how many scenes of Jerry West fucking do we need? Yeah, and also James Worthy just like smoking crack and being like i'm gonna shoot everyone on the lakers and you're like i don't think that's what they really yeah. wanted to i don't what think if, that what was, if james worthy's like yeah that's what happened he that's, goes that's damn y'all nailed me he was the first pick in the first round by the la lakers out of north carolina in 1981 or 82 draft what fascinates me about that that new show called winning time is why they changed the name you know it's such a weird yeah there's like it's, it's it's called showtime yeah but it's going to be on hbo and they thought that calling it showtime would somehow be subliminal advertising for showtime what's also funny is they called it winning time and then showtime collapsed like showtime's like not doing anything uh, anymore they got like eaten up by paramount plus so they changed it for no reason pretty much could have just called it showtime yes just call it showtime like why change it to a thing nobody ever called because it was winning. called the lakers were called showtime i know yeah but but like these people are dumb it's, yeah these are just like weird suit decisions another all-star Hakeem Olajuwon. 
By the way, Hakeem Olajuwon. They don't even put the before, H in oh, front of it. This is before. Wait, I don't understand. Was he always Hakeem? I don't or, know. I'm, if you know, guys, right yeah. end of the pod. Put it. Put the comment below. We'll never read it, but put yeah, it below. Yeah, yeah. Other people will read it, and you can let, argue with let it. Let us know why it was Hakeem. I just know it's Hakeem yeah, same, now. Same. But that's Hakeem. Hakeem. Do you think this is back in the day when the internet didn't... Uh, like Correct. Was, yeah, and people didn't care about ethnicities and stuff. Yeah, like whoever like, worked there was like, ah, came or yeah, came, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I ain't gonna meet him. <laughs> Just print the card. Just print the goddamn card. But yeah. That's awesome. That's, I mean, dude, this already... I've never seen a pack with the stack. two to one better cards than worse cards. All right, I don't know this one. Daryl Griffin? Jazz fans would know him. Played for Jazz for 10 years. First round pick out of Louisville. I always like guys that look high in their back picture. Where they're like, hey, you got your card photo. And he's like, what's up? Yeah, it's like a school photo day for yeah. them. He's like, okay. Terry Teagle. Terry Teagle from the Warriors. Back when they were terrible. Yeah, they were. But those unis, crisp. I Light love, blue and so, gold. So funny. The coach card. Oh, dude. That's what Dick Harder is. We've got a couple coach cards. What kid? This is just such kryptonite if you're a kid. No kid's like, whoa, Don Casey. Oh, I got from the Clippers. And he's wearing the suit from. Oh, he's got his lucky gray on. Yeah. yeah Where's the suit from? Like he knows. They might as well just be like, here's homework. Pretty much. Yeah, here's a homework card. Whoa, guy who's super old compared to me as a 13-year-old. Oh, cool. Old. Not a superhero, but a yeah. dorky old guy. He tells the buff guys what to do. And by the way, he became the head coach of the Clippers during the 88-89 season. He did not, <laughs> just love the next sentences, did not play college basketball, but he was the head coach at Alma Mater Temple for nine seasons. That's pretty great. Pretty, pretty good. good. He was 151 and 94 at Temple. So shout out Philadelphia. Brad Lowhouse. Dude, from an expansion team Timberwolves. I mean, look at that intensity. Look at you that, can't. dude. Look at Brad. He's you like, know, you know he got the inbound pass in. Also, how mad are you if you're an NBA player and your card is you inbound passing it? You go, come on, man. Yo, this is like the original Anthony Edwards. Oh my God. The original Brow. Fred Roberts. I would say he was the inspiration for the white guy in the movie Blue Chips. Yo, I believe that. That farmer that could just bang threes. <laughs> By the way, a little bit of a journeyman. Started in San Antonio. Halfway through the 84 season, shipped to Utah. plays a, Has a couple seasons in Boston and then ends up a, a buck in Milwaukee. Uh, but played at BYU. Of course. Second round draft pick. This guy's no slouch. He looks it. What, what a pack, it? dude. That's all of it. Dude, you had a good Oh, pack. wait, wait. There's one more. <sighs> Holy Dude, shit. Come on. Come on. Pat Riley. Coach card from the LA Lakers. Showtime. That's big. I was what shitting. I was shitting on coach cards. And then you got the one. And the universe listened to me. Yeah. And I was like, I'll give you a coach card. It was card. like, hey, Fahim, fuck you. Do Here's you Pat like, Riley. Do you, do you like the wet look? <laughs> oh, dude. Get out of a Lamborghini, Pat Riley. Look at that. Dude, that is unbelievable. Legendary coach from rome new york yeah he is march 20th the day before my birthday yeah we're bros look at this dude how serendipitous went to kentucky yeah dude that's huge you pulled a pat riley i pulled a pat riley that's your card dude you get the stack of the Yo, good ones thanks man i take the fred roberts with me over to the fucking crusty pile but there you go. That's yeah. another pack of cards this with is like comedians. The best gift I've gotten in a long time. <laughs> and I'm real. not even bullshitting. I'm not, I'm not being a comic real. or anything. I'm being real. <laughs> <laughs>